omnipresence of the cosmic law. Through these sutras, Nanak takes step by step on the ladder that takes us to an infinite horizon. In this particular sutra, he said, nothing can be said about the cosmic law. These couple sutras explains various aspects of this cosmic law. And one of the most important line underneath comes Hukme andar sabko bahar hukum na koi Everyone comes within the periphery, within the ambit, within the energy field of this cosmic law. No one falls outside. Hukme andar je buje, one who understands the nature of this cosmic law, ta homi kahe na koi. Homi means ego. How can ego sustain once he understands the nature, its attributes, its presence and understands that this surrounds us like an omnipresence, like an aura, then there is no possibility of ego to remain. In such simple words, he does not give the various types of nafs or ego, simply says in one line, one who understands this nature of cosmic law, ego cannot touch him. Ego cannot create any problems for him. Hukmi hovan akar hukum na kahiya jai Hukmi hovan jiv hukme mile bali aai Hukmi uttam nich Hukmi likhi duk sukh pai aai Everyone the rich, the poor, the high, the low, all are within this cosmic law. The pain and pleasure, all dualities are the outcome of this cosmic law. Life is a unique combination of surrender and struggle. When the struggle dominates, you move towards the world and when surrender begins to take roots, inward journey begins. Out of this evolves two ways of life. First is the way of a struggle. This implies that I am separate from the whole. So too my will differs from that of the whole or the cosmic will. Surrender, on the other hand, implies I am the part of totality. Therefore, question does not arise for my will to be separate from the will of the total. This is a great understanding that my will must coincide with the will of the ultimate. Moment to moment, things happen for which you have no explanation why this happened in your life, if you introspect. Yesterday, we had the Gurdwara session and one of the senior members, he had passed away, so it was a prayer and the langar, the, the typical name in Gurdwara for the food that is offered. I had my meals, and I was ready to go. When I went for the car, I realized my car was on the pavement. It was quite high and it could not be brought down from there. And behind was another car. So normally in a situation like this, we go and make the announcement on the radio, on the microphone, the PA system, 
so that the person whosoever car is will recognize that he is blocking or obstructing some someone i was wondering how to locate the person whose car is behind my car i reached as i reached the doorway to enter the gurdwara a person was standing he wished me new years we exchanged a few words then i said someone is blocking my car and the number is this the person said that is my car and that is not i am not blocking anyone i said no you are behind my car and unless you move i cannot come would you call this as coincidence no this is the grace things like these happen when surrender is complete and you are in the total harmony with the cosmic law you know that we are all bound by this law no one is beyond no one is outside that i didn't have to make any effort or anything just things happen in such a miraculous way that you cannot have any explanation for this when you are separate from the whole struggle is natural and when you are part of the whole surrender becomes natural life becomes like a smooth flow with this, with a struggle breeds intention worry disturbance agony and chaos when surrender happens peace harmony bliss and ultimately an understanding descends surrender is the quality of the religious person by going to the temple mosque church or gurdwara one does not become religious if you are following your will and your way is the way of struggle you want to attain your will through prayer worship etc then you are not religious when you do not have any desire of your own you begin to flow with the will of the unknown and unknowable you are in tune with all that is or is happening you move effortlessly no more swimming you are simply floating have you seen bird floating in the sky when it reaches a certain altitude it lays its wings spread and continues to float in the sky and it appears as if the bird is not flapping its wing normally to fly the wings have to be flapped but floating means you lay stretch your wings and float a alive man struggles in the water to swim but the moment the person dies means the mind is no more he begins to float you are no more swimming instead you are floating life moves in a different dimension this is the dimension of the unknown the dimension of the unknowable this is the dimension of religion this is the dimension of nanak nanak is not religious in any ordinary sense there is nothing apparent in nanak that seems religious he is not religious in the sense of your words he is religious because of his tremendous awareness and understanding of that which is one can really be religious only when there is an awareness and understanding nanak is flowing in divine placenta that he calls at hukum you can call hukum as divine placenta and you are in the cosmic womb continuously floating 
those who have seen the child in mother's womb will realize the child floats just as the astronauts float in the sky in the space when they travel in they literally float they do not walk floating in the sky what is the nature of surrender have you seen the birds flying in the sky for flying birds need wings birds flap the wings and thus soar high in the sky and then a stage comes when bird when the bird does not flap the wings it simply lays its wings stretched and then just float in the vastness of the sky so to when your consciousness attains to such a state of floating no ripples no struggle you just begin to float with the wind you are weightless this is surrender individual will is merged in the infiniteness of the divine will you are light like a feather egoless just floating remember weight comes with the struggle weight comes with the struggle weight comes with ego the more you are ignorant the more your struggle continues and also ego nourishes ignorance ego protects ego nourishes ignorance and ignorance protects ego together ego and ignorance create a veil or a barrier nanak calls this as maya or cool and when this veil dissolves nanak says hug a truth manifests the veil of ego the more you struggle the more despondent you are the struggle it strengthens your ego and creates misery and thus veils truth weight drowns you and weightless you flow weight drowns you and weightless you flow or reach the infinite high nanak says the moment you drop is struggle he not saying dropping the ego dropping the ego is like catching hold of your tail he says is drop the struggle you attain to the abode of godliness ego is the stone hanging around your neck and the more you struggle the more ego strengthens nanak says he be weightless and you will attain to oneness so he is not saying to drop ego he said to stop the struggle to start flowing floating do not struggle to swim just lay on the surface of the water the principle of buoyancy will keep you on to the surface and if you are not struggling you will simply float it happened once nanak came to a village and that was the village of sufis he stayed outskirts the whole village belonged to sufis when nanak when the sufi say sheikh got the message that nanak is staying he sent a glass of milk brim to top when the sufi sheikh got the message that nanak is staying outskirts the place he sent a glass of milk brim to top outskirts nanak was staying near a well seeing that the attendant brought a glass of milk brim nanak picked a small flower from the nearby bush and placed it in the cup of milk the flower floated onto the surface the flower is weightless 
The flower requires no space in glass. This surprise Mardana, and he wanted to know the reason for Nanak's action. Nanak explained, the Sufi's Sheikh has sent the message that village is full of enlightened masters. Therefore, no one else is needed. This is the meaning that Sheikh communicated through the glass of milk brim to top. And what about your action? Mardana inquired further. Nanak said, I send him the message back. I am weightless. Therefore, I will not occupy any place at the physical plane. Like a flower, I will simply float on the surface. Like the fragrance of a flower or its beauty, I will sanctify every being and fill the aura with an infatuating fragrance. Such is the way of a master, and Nanak is a master. What a beautiful reply. The Sufi master, the Sufi sheikh, send him a glass brim to milk. Milk is symbol of purity. And when it is brim to top, that means there is no more space. Can you decipher a message like this? And instead of sending a written message, Nanak sent back the same cup. Just took a flower, a small flower from nearby bush, saying that I'm an insignificant, yet still I'm a flower. And send it back. I am weightless, I will simply float onto the surface. I don't require any space anywhere. Fragrance, flower requires a space, but the fragrance, the aura, the energy field does not require any space. That fits in wherever it is. One who is weightless is indeed a man of awakening. Only such a person is learned one. Only an ignorant one can harm the other. When you are weightless, then your life undergoes transformation, life changes. Such a person can harm no one. Love springs forth. Non-violence springs. All these are the outcome of weightlessness. Like shadow, compassion, love, understanding follows such a being. Only such a being is capable of transforming all those who come in association. Hatred, jealousy, anger, violence, etc. follow the ignorant one like a shadow. Nanak says the basic question is of dissolving the ignorance. How can ignorance dissolve when you attain to weightlessness? The only one way for this. Hindu scripture, Veda, calls this as Rik. Lao Tse calls it as Tao. Buddha called it as Dham. Mahabir called this as Dharma. Nana calls this as Hukum, the cosmic law that pervades, that sustains all that is in the existence, cosmic, cosmos. Sufis call this as Noor the light. These are the various names for that which is existential. No name can really explain or encompass the magnanimity of that which is existential. Love all these names. Love all these expressions. Understand this. Live a life beyond duality and ego. Only then you can understand a Nanak, a Buddha, a Lao Tse. Only then you are religious, really. Only then you are a disciple, a Sikh of Nana. Nana has given a unique definition of a religious person. One who lives in Hukum is indeed religious. One who is harmony with Hukum, the existential law, the synergistic harmony, attains to bliss. Nanak says this is the only way. This implies you are now facing God. How can you see the light of the sun if you are running away from the sun? 
with your back facing the sun. The moment you are facing the light, lure, ignorance of many life vanishes. Nanak says the only way to face God is to be in harmony with the existential law or in Hukum. When you are looking into the eyes you are facing, then you are within the Hukum, the energy field. Unnecessarily you are carrying a weight and what is the weight that you carry? All your failures and successes are the weight that you carry. This is the disease that arises out of ego. I have heard once a chariot was moving, a common fly was sitting on the axle of the wheel. As the chariot was moving, dust was flying and filling the atmosphere. The chariot was huge. It was yoked by 12 horses. It was moving with a great speed. With all this, the fly considered itself to be magnanimous. The fly is sitting on the axle. Chariot is moving with great speed and dust is flying. Naturally, ego is bound to inflate. The fly thinks itself to attain greatness. Whatever you attain in life is by his grace. You are no more than a fly sitting on, an, on the axle. Never consider that it is you who is raising the dust as the fly thought. Dust fills the atmosphere because of the chariot. Never bring yourself into the picture. I have heard the story of a lizard that lived in a house under the ceiling. Lizards always live in the house under the ceiling. One day it happened the friends of the lizard, you know, just as we have friends, lizards too have their friends. And they too go out for outing. One day it happened, friends invited lizard for a stroll. The lizard pondered and finally refused the offer, saying that it will not be able to accompany. I am concerned who will support the ceiling once I go for the stroll. If I move, the ceiling may fall, and then I will be responsible for the situation, replied the lizard very wisely. The lizard thinks so. It may be true from the angle of the lizard. Ego is no more than a lizard. I have heard another story. A woman who lived in the village, she owned a cow. Every morning the cock crows and then the sun will rise. This gave the old woman the impression that if it is the crowing of the cock that sun rises every morning, if the cock does not crow, the sun will not rise. And she was right because every morning first the cock will crow and then sun will rise. The woman got arrogant. She covered, she convened the entire village and told everyone to respect her. She said, if you are not paying respect or taking care of me, I will leave this village and migrate to the neighboring village. Once I move out of this village, sun will not rise in your village. And then it happened. The villagers got angry. The old woman migrated to the neighboring village. It was night when she moved out of the village. The very next morning the cock crew and sun rose in the east. This confirmed her belief that sun rises only because of her cock. She was convinced that now sun will not rise in the other village. The logic of woman is straightforward and crystal clear as well. It never happened that sun 
would have risen and cocked it not crew. And now the woman had moved to the neighboring village. The sun rose when the cock crew. Then how can sun rise in the other village? With your intelligence, such is your intelligence. With your intelligence, you think within the narrow boundaries of your limited intelligence. God does not exist because of you. Instead, you are existing because of God. You exist and float within this divine placenta. Your breath is because of God. Not because, not because of you, you pray. However, it is He who gives impetus to your prayers. In fact, it is He who becomes a prayer within you. In fact, He who becomes the life breath in you. If you really understand this, then you can understand the message contained in the words of Nanak. Every syllable is filled with tremendous insight. Flow with the energy field of Nanak and grace will unfold the hidden mysteries. Now let us go into the sutras. This was simply the prelude to it. It is the hukum or the cosmic law that created all forms and names. Hukum cannot be put into the words. Try to translate the word hukum. It is cosmic law. The principle that guides everything. The principle that creates synergistic harmony. The principle that moves from chaos to cosmos. Nana calls this principle as hukum. It is because of this hukum that entire creation came into existence. All fame and name happens because of hukum. When you attain something or achieve success or gain or lose something, it is happening because of this cosmic law or hukum. This is why Hindus call this world is nothing yet but play or the leela of God. It means all changes happen on the axle that God is. You are simply an instrument. The problem comes when you consider this instrument or equipment. The problem arises when the instrument or equipment begins to consider itself the doer. It is something like this, the electrical appliances considering itself to be the doer. It is the electric current that cooks the food. But apparently the electric stove feels that I am cooking the food. But it forgets that it is the current behind it that activates the quality of the electric current, a quality of the electric stove. It is the electric current that cooks the food on the stove. It cannot happen otherwise. As an aspirant, you need to understand this. And this is the essence, you can call this as prelude, prelude to understanding the cosmic law.